Hi everybody, it's Tanisha, also known as Craft Tea, and today we're going to make some trays, rolling trays, dresser trays, without the use of a Cricut or a computer, using Dollar Tree nickel-plated serving trays and magnetic tins. The magnetic tins come two to a pack, and the silver-plated serving trays come in either rectangle or oval. You'll need to grab some stickers of your choice and a roll of the Dollar Tree Craft Vinyl. Okay, now we're going to put together, uh, well, they're called rolling trays. For this instance, it's gonna be more of a dresser tray, a trinket tray. Um, don't have to be used for rolling. They can be used for a variety of things. But this tray, <coughs> The first one we're going to put together is using the Dollar Tree uh, Crafter Square Vinyl that is also used for your Cricut cutting machine. Uh, so you're going to get your vinyl. I found a fun pattern that I think will look really pretty on a dresser. Uh, I'm going to use an oval tray for this tutorial and one of the magnetic tins that comes in a two-pack. <clears throat> now. I sell um, on my Etsy page uh, the template that fits this rectangle tray that allows you to trace uh, whatever pattern if you don't have a Cricut to apply to your metal tray. And I also sell a an oval one that fits this oval tray. So I'm going to be using these today to trace out what we're going to put in the center of the tray. Uh, you can also use your Cricut, now if you have it, to cut these shapes out as well. Now those that know me know I swear by my uh, Alumilite, the uh, Amazing Clear Cast is the epoxy that I use and I will put a link to them in the description. Um, that's the epoxy I use, that's it. Uh, if you don't choose to use epoxy, um, and a lot of people aren't really comfortable with it, I do use gloves when I uh, use epoxy and I also wear an N95 mask. Um, it's not an absolute requirement for this type of epoxy, but I just do it as an extra precaution. Um, you can also use uh, triple thick glaze. It's a spray on type of epoxy. Um, I still wear a mask and I still wear gloves. Uh, the Rust-Oleum brand is the brand that is my go-to for paint, primer, and for glaze. Um, so you do need to paint your tray if you're wanting your edges to be colored to match the center. Now, this is the this oval tray is the one I'm going to use this particular uh, vinyl with, and it's got some blues and uh, pinks in it. So I could paint the edge of my tray one of the pink colors, maybe one of the blue. It's also got this uh, kind of silver looking. Um, so I am going to leave the edges of this tray. Uh, silver, but I'm going to gloss them with the triple thick. I'm, I'm not going to put any color on this. I may do a little bit of glitter, but we'll see at the end. Uh, on the other two, with these stickers, I'm going to use a black uh, Rust-Oleum, and then I'm going to use a chrome Rust-Oleum. It'll basically be the same silver, but it'll have the chrome metallic paint, Rust-Oleum brand, and the black on the other tray, Rust-Oleum brand. Now, in regards to your tins, uh, if you want them to be matching to your trays, then you're going to need to color these uh, either with spray paint or acrylic paint or however you choose to match your tray. So what I have decided is on my oval tray with my contact paper, I'm going to Mod Podge uh, and use some iridescent glitter on the edges and I'm gonna leave this silver. So I'm gonna Mod 
Mod Podge and Glitter, my tin. Uh, on the one that is going to be chrome colored, I will also color my tin chrome with spray paint. And on the one that is going to be black, that's this one here, then I'm going to color my, uh, my magnet tin also with black. Now, I cut out some cute little circles on my Cricut. I cheat, of course, um, and it's just the size. Uh, this is a sticker, actually. I cut it out of a, a label, an 8.5 by 11 label. And I stick those right on here while I'm painting, spray painting my uh, my tin. Now this is uh, plastic in here, so you have to be really careful when you're pulling this off. But you'll need to cover the clear area if you have a tin that has this. Uh, or if you don't want it to be see-through, then you can paint right over. But if you'd like this to remain clear, then you're going to need to cover the center part of your tin with some type of tape uh, or paper or something uh, to keep the paint from going over that. Now for the sake of time, I'm gonna do all of my painting all at once uh, and then let these trays dry. And then I'll show you one by one what I did to put each one together. And then at the end, the epoxy. When I spray paint my trays, I only paint the parts of the tray that are going to be exposed. Uh, so if I'm using vinyl or a sticker to cover the whole middle, then I'm just going to paint the edges. Um, on these two trays, the majority of the tray is going to show, so I'm going to cover the tray completely uh, on, this, on this one. Okay, now since I've decided to add some glitter to the edge of this bear tray, and then we're going to cut out the shape of this tray uh, with my little template here and put this in the middle. I'm going to go for doing the edges first, all right? Um, and, and the contact paper or the, the vinyl paper last. So I'm going to, while the other spray painted trays are drying, I'm going to work on mod podging the edge of this tray. So I have an array of things out here. I'm going to try a couple of things and see what works. Uh, and uh, I'm only going to do the edge uh, because I want the silver portion here uh, to show.
Okay, now I imagine on this tray, we're going to have to do a few coats um, of this Mod Podge and glitter to get the effect that I that I think I'm trying to get. Um, but I'm going to do the same thing on the tin that I'm doing on the edge of the tray. Uh, and that's just adding the coat of Mod Podge. And there is some glitter in the Mod Podge as well. Um, it just wasn't, it wasn't enough. So I added a bunch more. So we'll see what this does. We're going to let this dry for a bit. And then we'll add another coat of this Mod Podge over the top to seal it. each one of these dry uh, for just a little bit and then we'll clean up this glitter. Uh, I'll want to do another coat of Mod Podge on uh, each one after this first layer has dried completely and uh, we'll also wait for a bit on the paint it wants to dry and then we could also place the stickers and do the epoxy on those. Now, another thing we can do while we're waiting on this stuff to dry, your painted set or your Mod Podge set or whatever it is you've done to the initial tray, we can go ahead and cut our pattern that we're going to use for the center of this. Now, that's how I like to do my trays with the pattern in the center and the edges a different color. You may want to go all the way to the edge with yours. If that's the case, the template that I sell doesn't work for that all over method. It works right in the center of your of your tray, um, even on the rectangle. So you would need to trace if that's how you're going to do it or use measurements on your Cricut to the outside edge of your tray as opposed to this inside circle. OK, so if you're going to trace you're going to trace along the outside, you'll get full coverage. If you want just the inside, you're going to need to trace along this little this little edge here. So your pencil needs to come underneath and trace under there, okay? Outside for full coverage, this little edge here for just the inside. So I am going to use my template because I like mine to cover just this inside piece. And I'm going to, and the reason these are clear, by the way, um, I do sell corrugated plastic ones that work just fine as well. You just can't see through them. So if you have a pattern that you're needing to adjust in a certain way, or if it's a picture or anything like that, these clear ones are really awesome for that because you can see your pattern right through when you're needing to cut. Okay, I'm not real worried about how the pattern looks on this. so. I'm just going to trace it on the on the plain side, on the blank side. And then you just would cut this out with a pair of scissors. 
Now I have my Cricut set to cut this same shape automatically, uh, but this is a demonstration for folks that don't use a Cricut or have one. And then we're just gonna cut this out. Once I cut it off of the roll, so I'll mess with that. And then we're gonna cut this, this shape right out. shape we'll just hold on to and that's eventually going to go in the center of our uh, of our tray. Now one thing you might consider uh, this has a uh, clear place in the center. Uh, I may just for the sec sake of it being decorative and pretty uh, cut a circle the same size as my clear piece and add that to the center so that it looks like a matching set. I'm gonna use my Cricut for that. But of course you could trace it, uh, but it'll be the same shape that I use to, to cover up that when I paint it. All right, <clears throat> now my chrome tray, <clears throat> excuse me, it's already dry. And this is the tin that we painted. Okay, you can see the chrome paint on there, magnet on the bottom. There's a little bit of overspray. You can also cover that magnet with tape uh, or a sticker like I did this top piece. And we can peel that off. And then you see that's still clear underneath there. Okay, so there's our chrome container. And this is our chrome tray. Now with the Dollar Tree stickers, <clears throat> really all you do is take them off of the of the sheet and stick them onto your tray. Now, depending on whether you are going to use uh, the full epoxy uh, or the triple thick glaze uh, may determine how you put those stickers on. Now, when I use the epoxy, uh, I just only put epoxy in this small inside portion of the tray. The rest of this, I coat with the triple thick, okay? If you're not using epoxy at all and doing the whole tray with the triple thick, then it may alter how you put your stickers on. Uh, the triple thick just doesn't give the same coverage over whatever you apply as the epoxy does. So you may not want to use as many or you may want to use, um, put them more in the center where the, you can layer the glaze a little bit several times in this center portion and not on the edges, okay? So <clears throat> we're just gonna open this package and take out the stickers. We're gonna do this one, this sheet here. And these are called, that's what the package looks like that they came in, okay? And we're just gonna apply these to various places on this tray.
Now for the tin, I decided to use um, some of the longer, I guess a longer sticker to go across along the side. Uh, or you don't have to put stickers on here at all, but I knew this one would fit and leave room for the lid to go on. So I'm gonna add a sticker to this as well. Now, after you've got the a number of stickers that you want placed onto your tray or onto your tin, okay, that is, that's it right there in a nutshell uh, for your tin. Okay, and now we need to cover this with epoxy to complete the set. All right, we got equal parts of part A and part B, uh, and I'm gonna mix these together, and then we're going to pour it onto our tray. Uh, I'm noticing as I'm looking at my lid, there's some blemishes on there. I'm probably gonna put um, take my mask off, sorry about that. Probably gonna put another sticker on and touch this up with some more chrome paint. I don't like the way, I don't like the way that looks, okay? But we're gonna go ahead and do the epoxy on this and I'll go back and touch up that, <clears throat> that lid in just a bit, okay? So I'm gonna mix these together, equal parts of uh, part A and part B. And when you get them in the stores or wherever you get your Illumilite resin from online, uh, I'll put the link for that below in the description. Uh, you'll see that uh, <clears throat> it will come in two separate bottles and you'll need to mix them. It's a chemical reaction going on in there. You see starting to change colors. Uh, Mixing it super fast makes lots of bubbles. You don't wanna just go whipping it super fast. You don't have to do that. Just mix the two uh, ingredients together. You got about 30 minutes of work time with about 24 hours, really up to 48 hours before this is fully cured. Okay, now this does have quite a few bubbles in it. It's all right. This Illumilite epoxy is self-leveling. This is the easiest stuff to use. I've tried some other brands, and if you're really familiar with epoxy, you may be okay. But for those that are just starting out, this Illumilite is a just about fail-safe. Okay, so I'm going to pour this in the tray and this is a total of four ounces because I used or three ounces an ounce and a half of uh, part A and an ounce and a half of part B and it's more than what I need but I wanted to make certain I had enough in case I have any issues while demonstrating so about two ounces is what you should use and I just basically fill my tray in Start with the outside edge and then I go into the middle and then I will take my tray and just kind of move it around and get that epoxy all the way over. Um, you don't need a huge amount because the whole point is to make this a tray. You don't want the epoxy so full <clears throat> that it comes all the way up to the top. Then it's not really a tray anymore. It doesn't hold anything, okay? So I just take my epoxy and just kind of let it run and move it around until my tray is covered. Popsicle stick, sometimes there's a little spatula that'll come with uh, certain sets of epoxy that you may purchase. What you wanna do is make certain that you get all of the bottom of the tray covered which is the surface that you will use um, 
if you use it as a rolling tray or if you use it as a dresser tray or perfume tray, that's the tray surface uh, that product will be on. And you will want to protect your, your stickers and whatever else you put on the tray itself, okay? So we want to make certain that the entire bottom of the tray is covered. We're going to go back and do the edges here with our triple thick, okay? We're not going to worry about epoxy getting all the way up there. We're just going to get it on the bottom portion of the tray. And I basically just let it roll all the way around. Let that epoxy roll and, and fall in the tray. Okay, until my whole tray is covered. Okay, now you see those bubbles in there. I know you can see those bubbles. We're gonna get rid of those. And the way I get rid of mine initially, <clears throat> before I go putting heat or any other products on it, is to just tap the tray. Uh, just banging it on a hard surface will help those bubbles to pop. Okay, that works. Your uh, popsicle stick or spatula or whatever you used will also help pop some of those bubbles. All that is is air, okay? This is self-leveling, so if you move it around and then put it back on a level surface, it'll level right back out. That helps to pop some of the bubbles that are in it. Okay. Heat is another resource for popping the bubbles. But another simple trick that you can use, okay. I'm gonna set this so maybe you can see it a little bit better. Okay, this I take rubbing alcohol and I just have a bottle of it that I've labeled and a couple of squirts of that onto the surface of your epoxy and those bubbles will disappear. Okay, so you see the, the bubbles there. There's a few bubbles in there. I'm going to spray I have that on the wrong dial. That's supposed to spray and it just shot out everywhere. There we go couple of sprays of rubbing alcohol on the surface of your tray and those bubbles are disappearing okay you might have to squirt it one or two times make sure I got the coverage that I need on my tray I'll show you this again in a second let me run it around a little bit more Okay, there's our tray. Now I've decided to put a little bit more epoxy in this. I want this a little thicker. I usually use exactly two ounces so I don't have to guess. <clears throat> okay, get those air bubbles out there. Get your air bubbles there. And I'm just going to go back and check and make certain I don't see any air bubbles or any mistakes or something I may have missed. I'm seeing a few up here, so I'm going to smooth those out. Right here along the edges, there's a few still in there. And as this levels out, uh, all of this will slide down off the edges and be on the this bottom portion of the tray. Let me get one more alcohol spray and I like the way this looks so far. Okay. Now I'm going to put this to the side and let it dry. And as you can see, there's a few edges that 
uh, go up on the tray. Uh, on this side as well, goes up on the side. Once this is completely dry, now you have to wait until the uh, epoxy is completely dry. This epoxy and this uh, triple thick do not go together. Uh, if you go spraying this on your edges while this tray is still wet, it turns the uh, part where the two meet into some murky film and it looks really, really bad on your tray. Okay, so don't spray your triple thick until you have this thing completely dry. So I'm going to put this to the side on a flat level surface and I do use a level on my table to make certain that this is, uh, that it's straight because if it's not, then your tray dries wonky sideways or whatever and your surface here is, is not flat. So you want to make certain that it is on um, an absolutely flat straight surface okay now i'm going to go back uh, and add the sticker to the tip at the top of this and i'm going to give this another coat of acrylic paint i don't like the way that lid looks so we're going to fix that now here is the black set painted and you can see i don't put the paint all the way up to the edge uh, because it makes the lid hard to hard to go on okay there's the black the black uh, container. And see, it's struggling a little bit already because there's a little paint up there. What you can do is take a little bit of paint thinner and just wipe that off. Okay, wipe, wipe around there so that this doesn't have such a hard time going off and on. Eventually, it'll wear out and it'll go on just fine. But that is how that would attach with the magnet onto your tray, okay? So we've got this black tray painted, once silver, now black, using the Rust-Oleum two times brand paint plus primer, okay? And uh, we can peel this sticker off of here too. Uh, sometimes I will wet this sticker just a little bit uh, to make certain that it doesn't stick to the plastic. Let's see how this one's looking. I may need to put a little bit of moisture on that one to make certain it doesn't stick to the plastic, okay? But we take the sheet of stickers. Well, let me cut these since I am not going to tear it. Okay, you got your sheet here. Open that up. And we're just going to start placing these stickers onto this tray. And we'll save a few that maybe some of the smaller ones that can also fit on this tin. Uh, and for the sake of knowing where they're gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on. And uh, so we know where to put the stickers, okay? So we're just gonna start sticking these stickers on and see what fun design uh, that we come up with. Now remember, like on the other one, if you do go up on the edges, you need to make sure you get right in the creases, of course. You want to get the sticker all the way flush with the tray so that when you put your epoxy on, the epoxy doesn't go underneath the stickers. Okay, so you just want to put those on wherever you think they would look good. And then we will do our epoxy. So you're going to put your stickers on however you choose. And I left one of these big ones. Now this is the small container, okay? Here's the, the little sticker that I put on the top that covers this clear part so that you can continue to see through it. I'm also going to get the paint thinner and show you how to get that extra paint off the edges here so this won't be so difficult to open, okay? But I wanted to show you... When I put the sticker down on the inside and I told you I covered with a piece of clear uh, sticker paper, the sticker paper comes on a eight and a half by 11 sheet that you can put in your copy paper, okay? I run it through the Cricut and you can see there's some other circles cut out of here. And at 2.4 inches, I cut out a circle 
that measures the same size as the inside of this container. Okay, if, if I can peel this up here, you'll see there's a sticker there, okay? And that's what I put over the top of whatever sticker I put in the bottom of this. If you are actually using this tray as a rolling tray and are gonna put your tobacco or herb or whatever in there, then you don't want all of that on top of and underneath the sticker. Eventually that sticker is gonna come off. So if we go edge to edge with the clear sticker paper, that acts as a little bit of protective covering over whatever sticker you put inside. Now for getting off, and this is pretty smelly, I once again use my little face mask, pardon the muffled voice, and a little bit of paint thinner. And I go along the edge of this just to help get some of that excess paint off and help this not be so difficult to open. You see that just wipes, wipes right off nice and neat and makes that look a little more put together. Okay, so you're just gonna wipe that excess paint right off of there. Okay, and then we'll let that dry uh, so that that lid will slide on there just a little better. I'm also gonna take it and wipe on the inside, just on the inside of this lid and make certain that I don't have any other paint in here that will prevent that lid from from sliding on. And I barely used a drop. I mean, you don't need much. The stuff's smelly enough as it is. You definitely don't want to have more going on than is necessary, okay? And that, in a nutshell, voila. Okay, and that gets our edges nice and cleaned up, okay? Gives it a little bit of a finished look. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a, a sticker to the inside of this. And we're basically just gonna do the same thing we did with the chrome painted one on this black one. Okay, put my sticker on the inside. I'm gonna take my clear piece of, from my sticker paper and this fits precisely right down in here and goes edge to edge on the inside of here. It fits absolutely flush. And I press it all the way down and I make certain I get right along the edges there because you don't want anything to go underneath that sticker. Okay, so there's your inside and we'll add a few to the outside under our paint line. Uh, I saved some smaller ones this time to go on this, this part. And I'll just add those to a can. Got this one ready for epoxy. Gonna put the epoxy on this tray and put it to the side to let it dry. I'm gonna measure out exactly two ounces this time. Do it precise and wrap this one up. Here's set number two. 
of the sprayed trays. Okay, I just added a little alcohol to get rid of those bubbles. Okay, there's that tray. Those holographic stickers are pretty cool on there. Not bad for a dollar. Dollar tray, dollar stickers. Buy your epoxy. You get two of these little tins for a dollar. I'd say that's not a bad deal. So I'm going to set this aside and let the uh, epoxy dry. And I'll also take a peek on the set that we were mod podging and see how it's coming along. Now our next tray, this isn't all the way uh, dry on the edges yet, but it is dry enough for me to go ahead and do our center part, okay? So you wanna make certain, I used a little rubbing alcohol in there, that we, you don't have any uh, glitter or glue or any anything down in here that may keep uh, your vinyl sticker from sticking. Anything that's gonna keep whatever you're using here from sticking, okay? Be it a, a picture, however you're gonna do it. Okay, here's my vinyl piece that I got from Dollar Tree. <clears throat> and I like to push the center down first and spread outward. And I also use like a straight edge or something to help smooth this out, okay? So I'm gonna find the center of my of my tray here and put this on and then I also would like to attach um, one to the little tin that we're going to use. Okay, Let's see if I got this just right. It's a little bit off. <clears throat> this takes a couple of tries to get it. Sometimes, sometimes I just nail it right on the first try. Okay, and that's how your tray will look. And then we will need to add... I'm going to use this little tool to get my little sticker up off of here because there is a bit of Mod Podge over the edges from painting. And this just helps me get it going. Okay, now after I got the sticker off of this center part here, and it was a little bit of a challenge, let me tell you. We're going to add a piece, cut the same size, that matches what we put on the tray. And put that right in the center of this so that we have a matching, a matching container. Okay. And what I will do after we put our epoxy here, we will also add a layer of the triple thick glaze to the top of this, or you could mod, mod podge it again um, to make this seal and stay all the way down. But that would be how this little tin would look when it's all put together. I'm not going to force it on because it's still drying, drying in there. Okay, and also I want to make certain I get all that Mod Podge off the edge of this lid. That also helps it not close very well. And that's just a little cleanup to make it nice and neat and function the way it's supposed to function. Okay, and that will go just like this.
and we'll get our epoxy on this tray. We've got our epoxy in on this one, and it is ready to dry. We've got all three of our containers ready to dry. Okay. So there's that one. Uh, you can see the glitter there. You can always add more epoxy, more glitter if you should choose. But that's a nice little tray for your dresser, okay? So we're gonna put these to the side and let everything dry. And then I will come back and show you the finished product. Okay, now here are the trays dry, okay? Got our epoxy in the middle. There's our Mod Podge on the edge. I don't know if I'm really liking that, but that's this one with the epoxy. Here's the black tray we did, epoxy, okay? There's the chrome tray with the epoxy, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is take this triple thick glaze, okay? I wear a mask when I do this, and I make certain I'm in a well-ventilated area, and I'm gonna spray the triple thick glaze just on the edges of my tray so that they get the same protective coverage as this epoxy, it's just a much thinner layer. Now, I have not tried to use this triple thick glaze for the entire tray. I know a lot of folks aren't real cool with epoxy. Uh, I haven't tried it. I may give it a shot to see how it works, but I am stuck on epoxy. That's just what I feel is the best, epoxy resin. Here's our little containers that go with each one. Okay. There's the Mod Podge glitter one. Okay. I'm also going to spray a light coat of the triple glaze on the top of this to seal uh, since we used a piece of vinyl on the top of there. And this is the chrome one. Okay. And these will each uh, adhere to the tray, either on the edge or to the tray itself. And you can put all of your little treats or goodies inside. Okay. Black tray. Same thing. Now let's put that glaze on. Now here are all of our trays uh, completed. And you can see this sparkles a little bit more once you add that um, triple thick on the edge. Uh, it gives it a little bit more shine and sparkle there. Okay, so we have, and I also put a coat on the lid. Okay, and you can see that gives it a little clear shine on the top. All right, so here's that tray that can be used as a dresser tray or however you want to use it. Magnetic sticks together. Here is our uh, 
Ooh, there's something on there from the garage. That's where I do my spray painting. Here's the final version of the chrome tray. Okay, and you can put your cup on there. You've got him to match right next to it. And then the black tray, okay? And I put the acrylic coat on the edges of that so it would have a little bit of shine. And here's its matching, matching piece. I get it to stick, there we go. Okay, and that my friends, our trays without using a Cricut, uh, even though we use, did use a Cricut type of vinyl, no Cricut machine needed for any of these trays. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today while we made these fabulous trays. Be sure to check out the website at www.creationlocationkc.com. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, so you don't miss any other fabulous DIYs. Thank you so much, and happy crafting!